Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and kind of revisit Trade League. And oh my god, the first thing I log in in here are these little guys. Oh, damn it, GGG. So today I wanted to go ahead and kind of talk to you guys about a budget starting form of Mana Righteous Fire. So to give a little explanation, I played Mono Righteous Fire, also known as Arcane Righteous Fire, Righteous Fire of Arcane Devotion. Lastly, I liked it during the leveling phase, but it hit like a massive wall for me pretty much when you got Indigon. Indigon is a helmet that I'm not currently wearing right now, which basically makes it so when you spend mana, you gain spell damage and Righteous Fire of Arcane Devotion scales off spell damage, but it created a very odd playstyle. You know, the typical play style of RF is turn on RF and shield charge, not kind of like juggle other mechanics. So I did not really enjoy that. This league, there is a new Haunted mod. If you guys have watched any of Captain Lance's uh, content or probably any generic mana stackers, you'll see it too, where you can gain mana per intelligence on the helmet mod. Now, what this allows you to do is skip Indigon, which creates a much comfier play style. So currently what we are doing is, since I play a lot of Solo Cell Found, I'm trying to see if I can recreate this character in SSF and if at any point it would be worth making compared to my typical Righteous Fire build. And the reason I bring that up is because Mono Righteous Fire typically scales off of very, very expensive or gated mechanics that you sometimes can't get in SSF. So currently leveling and budget, don't worry, the Mage Blood's literally just a skin over my leather belt. So this is all quite literally campaign gear. The only thing that's not campaign gear that I have acquired, I guess I crafted Fire Multi on the Scepter, uh, and I got a Kikizuru Ring, and we just put on Rise of the Phoenix. But this is stuff that I myself can find in SSF. This is nothing too crazy. We're still running on a four link. And honestly, the campaign has been quite a breeze. I thought it was going to be much more of a pain in the ass. So I've only done my first two Labyrinths right now. Uh, you can see that we have currently done... Uh, or, or sorry, I have my Arcane Blessing and I have my Divine Guidance. And I did go ahead and buy a Healthy Mind, primarily because I have one in SSF, and they're very cheap at this stage in the league, so I don't really mind them. Okay, so basically, Arcane Devotion is kind of like the true Righteous Fire build, in a sense of Arcane Devotion does a lot more damage with RF than regular RF. It's more comparable to, say, things like uh, Ivory Tower Righteous Fire builds, if you've seen them before. So they use Scorching Ray, not necessarily for single target, but to trigger Infusion that makes it so you deal more fire damage and take less fire, and also to apply exposure later on boss fights. So definitely more of like the classic RF style when you set it up this way. One of the interesting things about Arcane Devotion is since it scales off spell damage, you get to make use of things like say, uh, Low Life, which will come in later, but Low Life I don't think is really gonna be very budget. So that would be Pain Attunement, and then you get other access to things such as Herald of Ash. Normally we only run Herald of Ash for like a skin on our Righteous Fire build, but in a Mono Righteous Fire build, Herald of Ash actually provides like pretty decent damage. Um, normally it would only scale our Fire Trap, which kind of sucks, right? It's okay, but it kind of sucks. Uh, in this one, it's actually just very much worth it. And what's nice about this is if you care anything about MTX, if you decide to buy an Oriath's End, you will automatically have like overkill procs on that. So moving forward, there is a big problem though. If you notice my character, it has virtually no energy shield, very little life, and I have mana. So this character is still pretty squishy. I mean, it's enough to get through the campaign. I have like a little bit of armor from Determ. Uh, I have more armor if my gear was actually like decent, right? Have decent amount of regen, um, but like the character is, you know, it's nothing special right now. It just it just can kind of kill mobs quickly. So the problem is going to occur when you're trying to become viable in, say, red maps or late yellow maps. You know, I could buff my life to probably 4K, but 4K life with even a bit of mana open with just standard defensive layers is not really enough to cut it this day and age. So this is when you're going to have to kind of make that transition to low life uh, or I'm not really sure exactly what, but probably low life. Um, and that way you can reserve auras, uh, and then you can pretty much make use of your energy shield that we're massively going to gain on this node here, Sanctuary of Thought. So this is when the swap from Mono Righteous Fire becomes, basically you play and you're like, this is really fun to, oh boy, this is kind of a, this is a little bit more than I thought, right? So what I plan to do is look into different options on maybe like Aegis Aurora, Melding of the Flesh. That's not as easy to get in SSF, but... 
a lot easier than some of the other counterpart stuff to get, so... Like, I think I'd rather try target farming Aegis Aurora and Melding than maybe farming an Adorn setup. So, that's potentially one thing. Uh, we'll have to see. We're basically going to be playing this character uh, in Trade League for the next few days. Either that or if I get bored, we might go play D4. But I kind of want to experience this character a little bit. Uh, so, let me go ahead and show you on a boss fight over here. I have a decent amount of currency in the League still. I probably have maybe like four or five, six hundred Divines uh, in like in currency in general. So if I want to like, you know, skyrocket the character, I absolutely can. So one of the interesting things we're doing now, you know, let's have Mind Over Matter. This is a very odd interaction. So Mind Over Matter plus the Hierophant Ascendancy right now with Divine Guidance, we have 50% uh, of damage we take goes to our MP pool. So when we are taking 50% of our, of our normal RF degen and it hits the mana pool, this is basically screwing over our mana regeneration. This is kind of okay, right? It's okay because we're not really using the mana for anything else outside of casting Scorching Ray. Now, once we're done with this boss, I'm going to show you a weird interaction that I used during the leveling phase to prevent needing any kind of like crazy gear, right? So, when you're just starting out, you can't run Mind Over Matter because it takes too much, uh, too much MP, right? Unless you're using some crazy leveling uniques for mana regeneration, you're not going to have as much mana regeneration as you are life regeneration, right? So say I remove Mind Over Matter, you'll see the mana shoots up, okay? Now that the mana shot up, take a look at this interaction. If we take Agnostic, Agnostic is permanently going to drain our mana to zero until... Uh, well, not until, it's just going to drain our mana to zero. What's happening with Agnostic right now is it's basically taking the mana regen and it's being used as a form of life regen to counteract Righteous Fire. Well, this is all good, except for the fact that, you know, we don't have any mana, right? There's actually a way to fix that that my chat was telling me about. I had no idea things worked this way. Say I just remove like a little baby node here, right? And I decide to put it into this life mastery where you count as full while at 90% of your life or above. When I click this, my mana regen will now heal. The reason it heals is because Agnostic is counting me at full life as long as I'm above 90%. Which means what happens in this instance is whenever you go below 90% life, Agnostic will kick on to start the healing. So you have low life builds, you've got uh, full life builds, and then we have, as I like to call it, scuffed life builds. It's especially scuffed when you, for example, cannot even sustain your own Righteous Fire. So if you can't even sustain your own Righteous Fire, let me go ahead, take off the shield so our regen just dropped a bunch. Let me maybe turn off vitality. Okay, a scuffed life build looks kind of like this. Where basically what's happening is the life is trying to hit above 90%. The second it hits above 90%, Agnostic then turns off. And you kind of have this weird little effect going on on both of the globes. Now this is all good and fun, but this is primarily just for the leveling. In an honest build, uh, when it comes to Mono Righteous Fire, there's no way you're actually using Agnostic Endgame because sacrificing your energy shield is literally sacrificing the endgame potential of the character, right? Anyway, though, uh, the, the VOD is live on my Twitch, so if you guys wanted to peek how I leveled, it's pretty much all there. I'm going to flash my leveling gear real fast, and you guys can kind of, I'm sure, you know, get it based off of that. Let me just remove this. No, I got to remember to remove this after. So I'm currently just running a scepter here with clarity, um, mainly just a little bit of mana with uh, damage over time multiplier. I definitely like to get a much higher mana regenerate or mana roll in general. Helmet just has tri res life mana. We're here we're running purity of fire and vitality. Uh, on the shield, we're just basically rise of the phoenix. I'm running duration, scorching ray infused channeling. Um, just a standard amulet with strength and dexterity. Ikizuru for very good life regen. Um, a ruby ring here that basically just has a mono roll with some res and then I crafted life. Um, gloves, same thing, pretty much life, mono, res. Boots, kind of like the same thing except no mono. And then belt is just pretty much, it's actually pretty sick. We found this in, I forgot what act, but very, very good for that level. So that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I know some of you guys are playing the newest D4 season, so... That looks good. We might hop over there for like a week or something. But anyway, that's pretty much about it. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. 
And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all later.